Hi everyone, we're starting with module 9, where we're going to be covering the skeletal muscles, where they are located, and how do they move according to their location. As we can see from these images, here we have an anterior view, on the right side a posterior view. There are several muscles. We have over 600 muscles in our body. We won't cover all 600 muscles, but it's important for you to understand how they function and this is due to their location and usually what joint they're crossing, especially when we're talking about the appendicular muscles, which are the ones that are present in the upper limb and the lower limbs. So before we get started discussing the different types of muscles, it is important for you to understand that there are several layers to our body. And one thing that you should keep in mind when looking to see if the muscle is going to be deep or if it's going to be superficial, try to see if you can see bones. So this means that these are going to be deep. If you are unable to see a lot of bones, like it's the case over here on the left side, then this means that these muscles are going to be more superficial. So keep this in mind when we move forward. Also on the images, I will have the positioning of the image. Therefore, if it's going to be posterior or if it's going to be anterior or lateral or medial. So make sure to pay attention if it's written up here. If not, it will be written down here on the image. And this positioning will be important for you to situate yourselves. Moving forward, we will classify the muscles according to three different categories, either according to their action, so if they're going to be flexing or if they're going to be extending or adducting, abducting, and things like that. The location, basically where they originate and where they insert, and the shape. So depending on the shape, they will have a certain type of function. So let's look at all these categories in the next few slides. The first category is with regards to grouping the muscles with regards to their actions. And we can separate these actions into four different types. We have what we call the prime movers, or also called the agonists. We have the antagonists, the synergists, and the fixators. The prime movers are going to be the ones that are going to be responsible for producing a particular movement, and this will be the main muscle that's performing that action. Example here, we have the biceps brachii. Here we can see that the biceps brachii is going to be contracting, and therefore it's going to flex the forearm at the elbow joint. So this would be your prime mover or your agonist. Then we have what we call the antagonist. An antagonist for this action would be a muscle that's actually opposing the action of the agonist, and that's why it's called an antagonist. An example of an antagonistic muscle is going to be the triceps brachii, which we can see right over here. So if we have the flexion in this example of the biceps brachii at the elbow, the triceps brachii will extend the forearm at the elbow. So biceps brachii flexes and the triceps brachii, it will extend. So it's an opposite movement between the agonist and the antagonist. The synergists, basically, they're going to assist the prime mover in performing that action. With regards to the biceps brachii again, synergists are going to be, for example, the brachioradialis, which is a muscle, like the name says. It will originate on the brachium, which is the arm, and it will insert on the radialis, which is the radius. So it is crossing the elbow joint, Therefore, it will assist the biceps brachii. But since it's a smaller muscle, it's not the main muscle that's performing this action. It's just assisting with this action. Another example of a synergist is the brachialis, which is also a muscle that will cross the elbow joint. So these are smaller muscles that will assist the biceps brachii. Now the fixators, they're going to occur 
when you have an agonist and an antagonist muscle that's contracting at the same time to stabilize a joint. An example would be both the flexors and the extensor muscles contracting at the same time to stabilize, for example, an outstretched arm. So if you're holding a glass, in this case, but your forearm, instead of being flexed, it's actually extended, there are going to be muscles that are going to be contracting to hold it in place on both sides. So the flexors on this end and the extensors on this end are making sure that you're able to stretch your forearm and hold it extended for a certain period of time. We can actually say that the fixators are going to fix a body part in a specific position and there are two muscles that are acting, always by performing opposite movements. Now moving on to origin and insertion. It's important to understand origin and insertion. Do I need you to memorize where the muscles originate and where the muscles insert? Not necessarily, but if you know the bone that it originates and the bone that it inserts and the joint that it's crossing, then you will be able to understand the movement, the action that this muscle does. Do you need to know the bone features? No, that definitely not. If you just know the bone that it originates and the bone that it inserts and which joint it is crossing, then that will be enough for you to understand the action that that muscle is performing. So the origin can be defined by the point where the muscle will attach that will remain stationary. So it's the part that will not move. The insertion will be therefore the part that it moves. So it will be the point where the muscle will attach and it will move and it always move towards the origin. So in this case, over here on this image, we have the pectoralis major and you can see that the pectoralis major is going to insert on the humerus and it's going to originate over here on the sternum. Therefore, it will pull the humerus in this direction. So it will immediately rotate the humerus in the anterior side of the body. Therefore, we can say that the muscle action can often be inferred or concluded from where it originates and from where it inserts. It's also important to add that muscles have to cross a joint. You cannot have a muscle originate and insert on the same bone because for the body part to be able to move, it has to cross a joint. There's no way that it will move if it doesn't cross a joint. The other thing that we talked about is how muscles, they can only pull, they can't push, right? So the insertion will move towards the origin. That means the origin is pulling the insertion towards it, okay? So the contraction phase will always be active. That means the muscle is going to be shortening and the resting phase is always going to be passive. Muscles can be classified in several types of shape. Here are the shapes. They're circular, multipennate, parallel or fusiform, bipennate, parallel or non-fusiform, unipennate or convergent. I really don't need you to memorize any of this, but if you ever want to understand why that muscle is performing that action in that way when it contracts, then come back to the shapes. Like for example, the circular shape, that's the one that's present around the lips, when it contracts, it will reduce the size of your lips. So that makes sense. Okay, so I'm definitely not going to make you accountable for memorizing these shapes, but if you wanna come back to them and understand a little bit more, then go ahead but I definitely need you to understand the previous concepts because they will be important for you to understand how muscle contracts and therefore how they perform the movement that they do.